Okay, everybody. Well, uh, my name is Matt Purdy. I'm with Career Services, and I'm going to talk about uh, job search and networking today for your class. Now, full disclosure, a lot of things have changed, uh, and so some of my slides have been modified compared to what I typically say, and I'll refer to those changes as I, as I go through this presentation today. Uh, so, real briefly about me, uh, as I said, my name is Matt Purdy. I'm with Career Services here at Murray State. Uh, a little bit about my background and, and why I'm in this industry, why I'm in this field. I, I do have kind of a wide variety of different things that I did before I got into higher education. Uh, my Speaking of education, my education is actually in business. Uh, I started out in marketing uh, and eventually wound up with my uh, Master's of Business and Administration. And I completely accidentally discovered career services. I never even thought about higher ed as a job or as a career. Um, got into it, though, and found out I really, really enjoyed uh, being in the higher ed market and being around students and uh, kind of having having exposure to this world. And so what I thought was going to be a very short term adventure for me. Well, that was that was 13 years ago when I started. So it's been it's been quite the long and winding road. But I like pointing that out just because you never know where life is going to take you uh, in different twists and turns and, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to share a few stats here as we get started in terms of the job search section uh, in terms of uh, some some statistics. Now, these are put these were put in before the. Uh, COVID-19 situation that we're currently facing. So these numbers are uh, obviously going to be fairly modified, but I, I think they're still worth noting. Um, on average, these are just average, but on average, uh, a typical job opening may attract around 250 resumes, right? Um, that's that's can be fairly scary. Um, the really scary part is only about 2% of applicants are called for an interview, and it's nothing against the candidates or anything. It's just um, sometimes people don't put as much effort or attention into their application materials as they should. Uh, potentially a position has already been set up for somebody else and they have to post it just to to keep uh, HR happy, et cetera, et cetera. Things happen, okay? Um, probably the most important thing of today, and, and this is really kind of going to be the theme throughout this talk, is only about 15% of hires are made from a job board candidate, right? That's your your monster, your career builder, um, so on and so forth. Only 15% of hires are made from candidates that are found through those sites. 85% of hires are come come through networking, come through connections, uh, which is why you know, we're talking about networking as well here today. And one thing I hear from students is, well, I don't know anybody in this field, or I don't know who I talk to. Oh, I do have a few ideas for you, at least. Uh, and and any time throughout my talk, you're welcome to pause this video and, and take notes if you like, or uh, think about different people in these fields that you might know and that you might be able to connect with. The last one, professional associations, is something a lot of college college students don't think about. But every field has got some kind of a affinity group or um, uh, a collective or a, a, a group of individuals that get together that have a common bond, have a common theme, typically related to their work. Um, one, for instance, is uh, the AVMA, right? very popular with some of our um, animal students and our, our animal care students. Right? There's a ton of these, and uh, I can tell you from personal experience, I'm a member of the National Association of Colleges and Employers. We're made up of career services folks along with um, employers as well from, from throughout the country. And so anytime I want to collaborate or network with a colleague of mine who might be on the other side of the country, typically speaking, I can go to them and say, hey, you're in NACE. I'm in NACE. I'd like to have a chat with you sometime. And uh, most people are pretty, uh, pretty open to that. So in terms of, of starting this process and starting the job search, I think it's really important to uh, get your resume together, get it reviewed by somebody. I'll be very upfront with you. It does not have to be career services. Uh, that's kind of what we do on a regular basis. And so um, we, we feel like we're pretty good at reviewing resumes, but have it looked at by somebody that can be honest with you. This is a really important part, the honesty point. Um, I understand that, uh, you know, plenty of students have parents who hire and, and fire people and, and it's good to have their input and have their, have their, um, uh, kind of viewpoint on things. But 
also have it reviewed by somebody else as well. Somebody, like I said, that can be honest with you. And, uh, you know, the example I gave was my kids. I got three little kids. My daughter's got the best resume on earth. It's drawn out in crayon, but hey, I'm not going to tell her anything bad with it. <laughs> um, it's also important to know yourself, uh, know what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. And I don't mean necessarily even from a standpoint of interview questions, just what what are your skill sets? What are you good at? Not enough people take time to really self-reflect on things like that. And we have tools in career services to help out with this as well, career assessments, so on and so forth. And uh, needless to say, you really want to start early on these things. Um, we've always told even freshmen start thinking about this and start laying the groundwork for career contacts and connections. But uh, that's definitely more true now than ever. Another big thing is, is you know, think about the institutions that you're you're thinking about applying to. And obviously, flexibility is key, uh, especially in the current climate. But so is also just kind of landing in a place that you're going to enjoy and, and you know, uh, be able to go to work every day and not be miserable. There's a few tools to help out with this. One is Glassdoor, actually. This is a, um, well, I'll just kind of put it up here. Uh, you can go into their company review site and employees anonymously review their employers. Uh, it's a really nice tool to kind of get some inside track, some inside baseball on different organizations and kind of find out, okay, is this a good place to work? Is it not a good place to work? So on and so forth. Uh, if you go through our little breadcrumb trail right here, the, from our website, web resources, job search general, um, if you click on the glass door link on this page right here, uh, you don't have to make an account or anything. You get the full site for, for free, which is pretty cool. Now, another tool in terms of the job search is LinkedIn. I'm going to be really covering this in the second part of my talk, so I'm not going to linger on this slide. But one thing I will say, it's nice if you can reach out, find somebody in the field you're interested in on LinkedIn, and send them a brief note, something like this, for instance. Hey, I wonder if you'd be willing to answer a few short questions about the industry that you're in or about your career or about your organization, so on and so forth. Most people are willing to to talk about themselves uh, and to help help students out. So um, this is a really, really good tool that I think a lot of students sometimes forget about. Another major component to help out Murray State students specifically is Handshake, which hopefully you've heard about. Uh, we try really, really hard to push it because it does so many different things for us. Um, one of the big things is you can create your own profile. And I always encourage people, you, you'll see that little gauge there, your profile is 100% complete. You really want to try to get that as close to 100% as possible because you're five times more likely to be contacted by an employer if that's the case. In addition to having your profile and letting employers find you, i.e. make your profile public, uh, first and foremost, it's really user friendly. You can schedule virtual appointments with career services. You can also reach out to your peers at other Handshake universities, and there are almost 10,000 different universities across the country. Uh, it's a really, really nice system for that. I'm sorry. Let me walk that back. There are almost 1,000 universities. Sorry, I apologize. Um, uh, but you can you can reach out to your peers at, at different schools across the country as you apply to things, or if you just start things, you can favorite uh, positions in there. It's a real quick one tap sit, uh, setup, but it will tell you when that deadline is coming up, which is really really nice. Likewise, too, you can also schedule interviews with different employers. Once again, virtual in the day and age that we're in, and it's really really, really mobile friendly. Um, honestly, the app is easier to use than the um, website sometimes, I think, uh, on the student side anyway. Um, and so it, it's easy just to, to open it up and kind of scroll through and see what strikes your fancy. It does also make uh, recommendations to you like Netflix or Amazon or anything like that, which is nice as well. So you don't have to keep going in there and digging for positions. It will send them to you, which is really nice. And getting in your account is really, really easy. You simply go to marystate.joinhandshake.com. Uh, the screen looks a little bit different than my example here, but the, the idea is the same. You click on the Murray State sign-in, and the MyGate uh, uh, login page comes up. You'll, you'll log in. You'll do the two-factor authentication, et cetera, et cetera. 
Uh, and there are a ton of positions out there, uh, which are really, really handy. I think last count we had over 8,000 employers um, and a similar number of, of positions. Both internships and full-time positions are still available. Um, it's really easy in this day and age, you know, if you're looking at the news or anything to think there's no positions whatsoever out there. Um, there are. It may be different than what you initially thought you were going to wind up in back at the beginning of the semester. And as I mentioned earlier, it's important to be flexible, but uh, there are positions out there. The important thing is to try to stay as positive as possible and apply yourself, you know, go out and uh, definitely make a plan, make a battle plan to go out and apply for these things, especially right now. Um, don't wait to graduate. Um, uh, we understand. Look, I've been in this field a long time, as you've seen. I know a lot of students think, well, I'll worry about that after May. I got my finals, and I got this, and I got that. And right now, you, you really, really are going to put yourself at a disadvantage. This is the time to start kind of hitting the pavement and, and start going after these things. And so the more you can go out there and put yourself out there, the better off you're going to be. Um, and the sooner you'll get a position. Uh, positions take a lot longer uh to 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 get that offer than what most people think okay so that's handshake and that's great but that is yes another online tool another online board um and remember what i said earlier 85 percent of positions come from networking and from connections and and people that you know and the relationships that you make well that's that's the purpose of the next half of my presentation, uh, networking 101. Now, look, a lot of people hate networking, okay? Um, I'm in this field. I've been in this field for a long time. It's a big part of my job. I'll be the very first one to tell you I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, it's difficult for me to go into a room of strangers and try to introduce myself and, and try to talk to them. Um, I do it because it's my job. Uh, and I've gotten pretty good at it over the years. Um, and I have to say, I, I'm not alone in terms of, of that standpoint. Uh, most people, even professionals, uh, professional colleagues of mine at different career centers and different employers kind of share the same sentiment I do. They're like, it's sort of like a running joke sometimes uh, whenever I'm at events. And it's like, yeah, I really don't want to be here either. But hey, let's go ahead and jump in and see what happens. And I will say this. Every single time I have a situation like that, I come out better off than when I went in. Um, now, once again, the era of COVID-19, a little different. So that's why this presentation has been modified slightly compared to uh, what we typically give. Um, but in-person events will return. Uh, there will be conferences and conventions and things along those lines that you'll be involved in. And so got some tips to, to, to handle those situations as well throughout this, this section of the talk. Almost everybody knows this phrase, right? It's not what you know, it's who you know. But the important part is there's also another section of this that a lot of people don't think about. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And more importantly, who knows you? Are you putting yourself out there? Are you getting your brand out there, so to speak, um, and letting people know who you are? Some of the best relationships that I have um, come from people who have put me in touch with other people. Um, or, you know, oh, hey, you heard you were looking for this. I have actually have a friend that they do that, et cetera, et cetera. I've got a great example later on this week. We have a Facebook Live event with uh, an individual who's going to talk about working from home. That has been her career for the past, what, 10 years. And she's really, really good at it. And I got connected with her from a colleague of mine who I was kind of talking about this in, in the, the world that we live in now. And she was like, well, my sister's done that for years. You know, you ought to talk to her. And so then voila, we've got this great, uh, we've got this great um, presentation coming up. And so, but that's, that's another form of networking. So I'll very briefly kind of put up a uh, kind of our, our definition slide, if you will. Uh, I think the important thing is understanding it's it's should really be a reciprocal activity. It should not be just a one-sided kind of thing. Uh, one thing as as at least for me anyway, anytime I meet people, I try to think, okay, how can I help this person? What can I do for them? Um, and I really try to pay attention to not only what they do from a business standpoint, but any kind of personal hobbies they might have or interests or or so on and so forth. 
uh, you probably noticed on my cover slides um, picture of my uh, my wife and I outside of the Enterprise Center in St. Louis. We're both big St. Louis Blues fan. And when I got to Murray State a few years ago, I found out one of our deans um, happens to be a big Blues fan as well. And I wound up getting him. I was able to go to the Winter Classic, the outdoor hockey game at Bush Stadium. And I got an extra commemorative winter classic puck and uh next time i had a meeting with that particular dean i i, I presented it as a gift and and they were blown away and, and thrilled with it and everything like that it was a little tiny detail but uh I, I think that certainly helps in terms of kind of having that that personal relationship and that personal contact uh with people i didn't give that thinking oh hey okay what are you gonna do for me now it was just a, a nice gesture and, and something that i thought that that they would appreciate um and it has. Uh, it, it has actually kind of helped out in different ways, I think, uh, with, with my relationship with that particular academic unit. A little bit about why networking. Um, so as we talked about, 40% of new hires come from employee referrals. Um, so 40% of hires come from, from coworkers kind of recommending to their boss, hey, you know, this person's really cool. They'd be a good, good fit on the team, so on and so forth. As we've already mentioned several times, 80% of jobs are not advertised online. And individuals who find these positions through through their relationships are usually more satisfied and typically earn a higher income, actually. Uh, so there's a lot of different benefits to this. And, and even if you don't like it, it's, uh, it's only going to help you out throughout your career. And I'm not talking here about just your first job out the gate. I'm talking about even as you're in your career. Um, as you need to make relationships with different departments and different units and, and different geographic locations of the institution you're working for, all that can come into play and, and be really, really important when it comes to networking. So a few things uh, in terms of, of what to have and what to get ready for networking and these connections that you have. And understand we're all connected in different ways to different people. I've got some samples coming up to, to kind of talk about this. But it is important to have an update resume, um, get your voicemail set up, have a good positive attitude. Uh, I kept eye contact and smile on here because, you know, in the world of Zoom and Skype and Hangouts and everything else like that, they may still see you. The business cards with contact info, I'm also keeping that in too because as things lift and as we start getting together, uh, you may want to have some business cards for yourself. And I've got some samples of those too. But I, I really want to kind of stop for a second and talk about smiling. Who do you think does better at networking? Who would you rather talk to on Zoom? I don't know about you, but I'd rather talk to Tigger. And there are plenty of days where I feel like an Eeyore, but if I go to a, to an event or do a meeting or to a place, I man, I've got to be a Tigger. Uh, you know, that's just, you got to fake it until you make it sometimes. And that includes Zoom uh, as well and being on camera and being engaging. One quick point to note on that, as you go through and you have job interviews, uh, virtually speaking, uh, everybody talks about make good eye contact with your interviewer, make good eye contact with your interviewer. Well, one of the best ways you can do that, and it's really easy actually uh, on a video interview, you look at the camera. Don't look at the screen, look at the camera, and then you're making eye contact. If there's one or 100 people in that room, you're making eye contact with every single one of them. That's a really powerful uh, tip that I want to give out. And I didn't mention business cards. Sometimes students are a little, a little freaked out by that, but uh, think about their professionals. You're a professional. Um, you make business cards for yourself. Uh, this can be handy as well if they uh, aren't accepting resumes or if you just, you know, meet them at the gas station or, or the grocery store or whatever it might be. It can be beneficial having these for you and you can design them in different ways. Uh, key points, obviously, make sure everything's grammatically correct. There's nothing misspelled. I only bring that up because I have seen that happen before where somebody has misspelled something on their card. Um, name contact information ideally your major and when you're graduating because those are going to be two other major things that an employer is going to be wondering about now a few other networking ideas uh, to go along with the, the slide i had in the first section uh, different faculty members professors people that you meet uh, we're not doing any uh, in-person career fairs right now, of course, but uh, we are doing virtual fairs and virtual events with employers. Same way with the area professional groups and also contacting recent alumni. We've got some really passionate alums here at Murray State 
who happen to be typically in the fields that, that uh, you might be interested in. Now, I understand that uh, some of uh, some of these students may be interested in uh, the equine industry, and so I wanted to put up a, a couple of options as well. The American Society of Equine Appraisers, likewise the Kentucky Horse Council, and you can send them. You can go out and kind of find their contacts, typically underneath the About tab. You can see who the, the, the director is, who their um, board members are. Those are typically people in the field uh, at fairly high levels, which is not a bad thing at all. Uh, don't worry about networking too high. Network as high as you can. Um, and don't leave any stone unturned. Don't look at somebody and think, well, you're, you're not high enough to help me. And you might be surprised. Um, and also, too, don't be intimidated. Everybody started in the same place. Uh, and so you've got to kind of put any kind of reservation aside and, and you know, go after and, and look for all these contacts that you can. And this is another example of a, of a note that I received one night actually after an event uh, from a student. And this is just, this is awesome. And I asked for her permission to use this. Um, but this really is perfect as you meet people and as you meet individuals, whether it be online or somebody that you met maybe earlier in the semester, or earlier in the academic year, it's never too late to follow back up with somebody and say, hey, you came to my class and uh, you really inspired me. You know, would, would you mind uh, you know, doing a quick phone call with me sometimes, so on and so forth? I've got some questions. And that's awesome. That's wonderful. I do have, as promised, a few examples of networking. Um, I mentioned different uh, associations that I'm in. At, at one point in time, I was in the Gateway Career Services Association. It's a, a group of career services folks, mainly centered around the St. Louis area, uh, where I've had some some dealings with in the past. And uh, this is a friend of mine from uh, that group. And I one time had a student come to me, and she wanted an internship at the St. Louis Zoo. And I thought, well, okay, they don't recruit here, but I know somebody in St. Louis. Let me uh, let me reach out. This is an individual who uh, works in career services at a St. Louis area university. And so I sent them a note saying, hey, do you do anything with St. Louis Zoo? So on and so forth. Now, do forgive his uh, misspelling here of handshake. OK, look, we're good enough friends. We're on Facebook. This is Facebook Messenger typos happen. OK, but that was such a great idea for me. And and to follow up the story, we were able to go in handshake and make uh, make a connection between the student and the St. Louis Zoo. And uh, last I heard, she was in uh, in process to potentially have an interview with them. So now that happened, he helped me out, and then he turned around and asked if I could help him out. Um, in this Gateway Career Services Association, uh, they had a professional development award and they needed a judge. Uh, one of his canceled on the last second and uh, was wondering if I'd be willing to, to jump in and help out. And I was more than happy to do that. Now, we've been talking about all business stuff so far. We've been talking about, okay, jobs and, and relationships and colleagues and so on and so forth. Um, I, I thought I'd throw kind of a fun, a fun one in here as well. Um, I happen to like rock and roll. Uh, I happen to like Guns N' Roses. Slash is really cool. You might wonder why Slash is in my presentation right now. Well, a couple of things about Slash. Uh, one, he's a really good guitarist. Two, um, he's also uh, into snakes. Sorry if anybody out there is squeamish around snakes. You can fast forward through this part. Anyway, um, there happens to be a, uh, well, his snake, real quick, to kind of walk the story back, Slash donated one of his anacondas to the Nashville Zoo. Uh, you can go there and see Slash's snake and so on and so forth. That matters to the story here in a second. Um, there's another friend of mine uh, here on campus who runs our anything media related, uh, anything related to videos. So whenever you see the all campus sing live stream, um, or videos of graduation, or the Facebook videos, Facebook Live videos, so on and so forth. Um, there's one individual, he's a friend of mine, um, and I've got his permission to tell this story as well. And I became friends with him on, on Facebook and Instagram and all these places, and I found out a few years ago he was a huge Slash fan. Huge Slash fan. 
And okay, well, that's fine. Well, at the beginning of, the, of this academic year, back in the fall, I'm hanging out and kind of flipping through Instagram. And I, I happen to notice this come up on his Instagram. It's a, uh, it's a backstage pass. I knew exactly what that was um, for, <laughs> for one of Slash's shows. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. And uh, a couple hours later, he posted this. And uh, it's my buddy there on the right-hand side. And, of course, next time I, I saw Jeremy, I had to ask him. I'm like, okay, dude, what's, what's the story here? What's going on? Well, it turns out one of Jeremy's friends... Uh, his friend's father is the head herpetologist at the Nashville Zoo, um, who apparently Slash is in, in communications with uh, from time to time about his anaconda and is everything okay and, and so on and so forth. And so one thing led to another, and um, some calls were made when Jeremy uh, was going to go to this show with his, with his friend. And, uh yeah, apparently got to go backstage and, and meet his idol. So uh, I, I said, I asked Jeremy if I could use this this uh, this example because once again, it's a relationship. It's a networking thing. It's not necessarily something that you'd want to go out and and buy online. Um, I know you can sometimes meet artists for for enough money, but uh, I, that's a much cooler story and a much uh, uh, a much more fun way to talk about networking. Um, and according to Jeremy, Slash was pretty cool. So uh, that's, that's a pretty neat story all the way around. So typically in this part of my talk, I, I talk about kind of being in, in physical proximity to people and handshaking and how do you handle food and so on and so forth. And um, right now that seems kind of silly to talk about because there's not going to be many in-person events. So I really want to, to kind of pause on that and talk about LinkedIn. Um, this is going to be your new best friend when it comes to meeting people and making connections in the industries that you're interested in. Um, I will say, and I've seen it myself, LinkedIn has had a huge boost in use uh, over the last four weeks with the COVID-19 situation. And I've seen it myself. Even, uh, even the first week of this whole situation, I was seeing a ton of people pinging my profile and, and wanting to connect with me and even people who just viewed my profile. Um, it, it shot up almost overnight. And uh, yeah, same way too for everybody else on the career services team. We had a, actually a, a chat about that at one of our meetings. Um, and so it was a kind of interesting side effect, if you will, of the COVID-19 situation. But I find a lot of students are kind of a little worried about LinkedIn or maybe they're not sure exactly how to use it or they set it up to get a grade in a class maybe a few years ago and they don't remember their password and they didn't really complete their profile, et cetera, et cetera. I recommend doing all of that. Dig up your, your password, reset it, whatever you got to do and go in and, and get your profile as strong as possible. Um, but I will kind of walk through some of the basics about how students can use LinkedIn. First and foremost is finding people, okay? Um, sometimes, you know, students might think, well, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to find anybody out there. It's not that difficult. Um, you go to the search page, you come down, you click on people, and you'll find a few things that kind of come up there across the top. You'll see people, connections, locations, current companies, but then all filters. And I like telling people, you know, click on all filters. And that can open up a world of opportunity for you. Um, different things, not only current organizations that people work for, but former organizations, the past companies. That matters because if somebody's really interested in working for Churchill Downs, for instance, you find a connection that maybe they worked at Churchill Downs for like eight years. They left like six months ago, but they were there for eight years. That can still be a really valuable contact. And, and think about that. Um, likewise, too, you scroll down, you can also look at different schools. And so um, I always like any time I travel to get together with uh, one of our alums here at Murray State. And if I ask them, hey, do you want to grab a cup of coffee or breakfast? Uh, yeah, I'd love to sit down, chat, find out how things are going. Sometimes I'm interested in finding out if they want interns or full-time hires. Um, once again, a mutual give and take. If I can help them hire, that's 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 great. Uh, and so, for instance, you know, a lot of us in career services, we deal with HR folks. And uh, if I was traveling or, or had a interest from a student in human resources around Lexington, this is one of the searches I might use to find people 
in that field in that geographic location. Uh, and you can modify this for your own situation. You don't have to have the Murray State alum on there. Um, but having a point of commonality works really, really well because if I just start cold calling any HR person around Lexington, they may or may not return my call. But if I can reach out to an alum and explain, hey, you went to Murray State. I currently work for Murray State. I know it's the finest place we know. Would you mind having a quick chat with me? Uh, it'd be actually something like this, uh, right? From my point of view, um, I've actually sent uh, sent notes very similar to this. You know, would you be able to answer a few short questions about your recruiting cycle, partnering with Murray State, blah, 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 blah. Um, another ones are looking at specific companies, okay? So we do some work with Boeing, uh, the airline manufacturer, and same kind of thing. I'm always interested if I have a meeting in an organization or at a company or an interview is what I tell students, go out here and do a little professional stalking. Find out, okay, how many alums do they have from Murray State who are on LinkedIn? Um, it's not an automatic uh, uh, guarantee that, that all of our alums will be out here, but a good chunk of them will be depending on their field, depending on the industry they're in. But that can be really beneficial and also put your mind at ease because if you're interviewing at a place and they've got like 30 racers working for them already, they kind of know what, what they're getting. And chances are you're going to meet some alums. It would be really good to know that before your interview instead of during your interview. So a few quick tips uh, about your profile and how to really kind of rev it up and get it as good as possible. Uh, LinkedIn has got something called all-star status. And the good news is everybody can do this. Um, everybody can, can take care of this and get to this. Um, the thing is being an all-star, you are much more likely to be found by employers and by recruiters. So a few things I'll talk about. You also get a cool little badge right there um, on your profile page. And you're, as I said, you're more likely to be contacted by about 40 times. It's free. That's the best thing and everyone can do it. So here's the thing. You want to set your industry and location on your profile. You want to have an up to date current position with a description. Now on the current position, you might be working a part time job. That's okay. You might be involved in a student organization or a Greek organization. Great. Make that potentially your current position. You need to have two past positions on there. Same kind of thing. Remember, organizations involved in here at Murray State, those may work. Um, definitely have your education in there. Include key courses and your expected graduation date. And have a minimum of three skills selected, but you really want to select a lot. I tell people select, you know, 20, 30 of them. Um, I, I don't know what the limit is. It's pretty far up there. You know, selecting more is not going to hurt you. It's not like they're going to look at somebody and be like, oh, they're too skilled. That, that's kind of a myth. That doesn't really happen. And you want to have a, a good photo, professional, but not too stiff. And then at least 50 connections to getting all star. So somebody's starting out from the bottom uh, and they've, they've you know, kind of got to build themselves up a little bit. Rewind this video back to that slide about uh, who could I possibly network with and then just kind of go through. And if you can find what three or four from each of those categories, you'll be good to go. Uh, you'll you'll get 50 connections in, in just a couple of days. So a few best practices as far as setting up your LinkedIn profile. I'll tell you, I'm, I rely on spell check just as much as anybody else. Spell check in Word and then copy and paste. Uh, or Grammarly now will typically look at text fields as well. So that's another good option. Um, look at job descriptions from other industries and other fields and, and try to look for those keywords. I always like telling people in the hospitality field, for instance, Disney, they don't have customers, they have guests. And they don't have employees, they have cast members. So somebody really focused and dialed in to, to work for Disney once, uh, once they reopen. Uh, I would recommend use that kind of terminology. And uh, keywords are typically uh, searched by the AI in, in your title block, summary, and top positions. And so keep that in mind as well as you're developing these things. And so um, it helps just to have something in there. Something's better than nothing. But then as you go through and refine, really kind of think about the keywords that you may want to use. Another quick note on profile photos. Um, 
these are all photos that uh, we've seen on, on LinkedIn before. Uh, and obviously not the most, uh, not the most professional, particularly, you know, kind of stretching or having photos that are too small. Um, visually, that's just not appealing and, and kind of a pain uh, to deal with. And honestly, in this day and age, it's not hard to get photos that look like this. Now, yes, some of these are professionally taken, but you know what? A lot of them are also taken with your phone. Um, and I don't care if you're on iPhone or Android. Phone cameras are, are well enough now. If your phone is, you know, four years or, or newer, it'll take a fine photo. That's okay. You want a plain background behind you or something that's not too distracting. Just your face. Try not to do the move uh, as our friend up here in the upper left-hand corner is done where you you take a good picture of yourself, but it was at a group thing and you know, you're trying to cut somebody's face out of it and everything. Yeah, that's just too distracting. Um, take a second while you're home. I tell people get dressed up from the waist up, snap a couple of quick pics, upload it. It's a 10 minute job and you'll get a lot of mileage out of it. Um, likewise too, you'll have these banners up here. Now that to me is a misbranding opportunity. Uh, it's once again, it's really easy to kind of go out and find some some photography or some footage, or you may have some actually on your devices that you can put up there and, and make it look really really good. This is a friend of mine that works for Florida State. Um, of course, our friends at CFSB. That's uh, a nice image there. Uh, same way here uh, with uh, Markham Engineering up in Paducah. Um, you know, that's a great uh, tool to kind of help brand themselves. On, um, on on their particular LinkedIn page. And so there's a lot of good tools you can use with that. Another thing is um, going in here and editing your public URL. Um, too many people on their resume will have a LinkedIn URL, but it's like one of the, you know, linkedin.com slash n slash 0145723678. Um, you personalize that. Put your first initial, put your last name, whatever it might be. After you do all that, uh, and you kind of flesh out your profile a little bit, think about going in and asking for a recommendation. Uh, that's different than an endorsement. A recommendation is sort of like a letter of recommendation or a brief paragraph talking about how awesome you are. Um, they make it really easy to ask for these. Do that as well. Um, that's a really good way to kind of build up your profile, especially as people find you and they look for you and employers especially, and they're debating well, this looks interesting. Do I really want to call them for an interview or not? Um, recommendations can be uh, kind of the make or break moment in terms of if you're going to get a call or an invitation to apply to something. Now, kind of in closing here, I'll, I'll talk briefly about how to use LinkedIn uh, and how this works. And so naturally, we're going to talk about the job section and make sure that you have this set up uh, to get job alerts. Whatever it might be, you know, for, for our purposes here, I put in an alert for marketing internships. And uh, likewise, too, I can create a search alert and I can determine how often I get bothered by this and, and so on and so forth. So um, this for me, uh, I put it down in this example as weekly, but I can make it daily if I want. Um, and likewise, too, if I just want an email or if I just want to be notified when I logged in LinkedIn, um, as busy as I am, I like putting both. Uh, that way I know I'll see it. And then if something comes up, uh, here's our friends uh, over in Louisville, uh, UPS. Um, if I find a connection that I have that works there, man, I'm going to reach out to them. I'm going to say, hey, do you, mind, do you mind making a referral to me, uh, for me? You know, I've, I've already applied on the site. Can you go in and tell your your recruiting folks, your manager, or whoever it might be, that I've applied and I'd be a great fit? Um, if I know this connection well enough. If I don't, if I just met them one time and a presentation last September, I might not hit them out with that so hard. Um, but if it's somebody I know pretty well, yeah, I'm going to use that to my advantage. Likewise, too, mentioned it earlier, but professional associations and different companies. Are another great tool to use as well on LinkedIn and kind of reach out and kind of find out more about what's going on with them um, and typically what kind of positions they have uh, and, and keeping in a track and an eye on those pages as well. And some closing tips. Um, don't hesitate to comment on, on industry groups and articles. 
Go out to the groups that you follow. If it's something you're really passionate about or really interested in, ask if you can guest write for them. Uh, this serves a couple of different purposes. One, you get to be known or, or viewed as a um, as somebody in the know, almost as a industry expert, if you will. And if you find yourself really kind of guest writing some really good stuff, once again, people will start connecting with you. That's not a bad thing at all. Um, and likewise, too, they can also be a good answer to, well, what did you do during the COVID-19 crisis? Well, all my classes switched online, but then I decided to network and get really dialed into X industry, uh, including doing a lot of guest posts on different LinkedIn groups that I followed. That would sound so good during an interview. Um, and likewise, too, LinkedIn, not unlike Facebook, uh, will send you notes about new jobs, job anniversaries, tenure anniversaries, so on and so forth. You can send people a quick note, a little quick congratulatory note. It doesn't have to be on their actual profile. It can be just a message to them uh, or a text message. To me, I think that holds a little more weight, a little more personalization versus just posting a, a comment underneath something. Um, but whatever it is, it's good to acknowledge these things. So that's it for me. Uh, I hope this has been an informative uh, uh, talk for, for everybody. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come in and, and record this. You can always reach out to me. Uh, there's my information there on the screen and pretty one at murraystate.edu. Uh, you can also find me online as well. And likewise, too, if you're interested, we do have walk in hours for career services from 10 to 2 on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And you can access that through our webpage. You can also uh, always just reach out to me directly, either through Handshake or through my email. Look forward to working with you all soon. Uh, take care and go racers.